Let's talk about master detail web pages. So there's a concept in mobile apps, web pages, where you've got one page that has the master information, and then if you select or click on one of these items, you go to another page and you see all the details about that thing. This design pattern is known as master detail. You'll see it in iOS, Android, and lots of websites. It's a very common pattern. So I want to talk about JavaScript and HTML and how we can make this work within a single page application. Now what I'm doing here is I've got three divs set up as if they were pages. Um, if this were a real single page application then what we would be doing is showing one of these divs at a time. The other ones would be hidden behind the scenes but it's still working the same way. It's just that we're selecting something we're grabbing the ID of this, going back to our main data source and saying, okay, where's the item that had the ID from this guy? Then extract all the details and write them out on the detail page. So that's what we're going to be doing here. Um, my CSS, pretty basic. Uh, I've got the three divs set up for display flex, so they're all lining up across the screen. Um, I've added a background color for the hover or active state, so if one of the person list items has the active class added, it'll get a background color, same as if I'm hovering over it. So you can see as I'm mousing over here or I'm clicking on one of them, it's putting the background on. Now we've got uh, the details. These are just the list items. I just got rid of the bullets. That's about it. I have individual styles here. These are the different elements that are going to be in the data the names of the values, the keys for the values in the data. I have them here just so if I want to style some of them differently, I have access to some properties, like last access. I'm going to use a, a different color for that text. Looking at the HTML, we have three divs set up with class page. That's what gives me the gray rectangles. And this one's ID master, this one's ID detail, so I could show or hide those if I wanted, if we were doing some navigation. One UL is called master list, the other one's called detail list. Inside here and here, this is where I'm going to add the list items. All right, let's jump into the script. I have up the top a constant called data. This is my object. Now this could be something coming from a JSON file. I could have called fetch brought down some data and I'm loading it just to keep this video shorter and focus more on the master detail ID. I hard-coded it into my JavaScript file. Inside of the object data there is a property called people. It is an array and it is a series of person objects. They've got a person ID, a name, a last access timestamp, uh, is mobile, and an avatar just to have some a variety of data types here. I've got a number, I've got a string, I've got a date, I've got a boolean, and then I've got some Unicode, an emoji. Timestamps are great to use for dates. You don't want to hard code out the whole thing. It's much too easy to make a mistake when typing that out, but with a timestamp I can pass that directly into a date object as I create it, and then from that I can extract the bits and pieces. Uh, if I want to show the day of the week, or the month, or the day, or the year, or any part of the date or time. I can do that from the timestamp. I have this other array called months because in JavaScript with the date object if I'm trying to ask for the month it's going to give me a number from 0 to 11. I will then come to this array and extract what I want to show as the month. Okay. DOM content loaded, we're waiting for that event, I'm calling my init function, all it's going to do is call load master, and I'm passing in that data people object from up above. Again, this could have been a fetch that was done, the fetch brings back the data, and then I pass it into my load master function. But I hard coded it, just to save us some time. UL, master list, this is the one on the first page. We do a for each loop through the people for each person. We're creating a list item, putting their name, giving a class, and we're adding a click listener to call show details, this function. Now this is the one that we're going to be writing. This is the one where we're going to say, hey, here's all the other information about the person that you clicked on. 
the other important key here is this right here. We are creating our own custom data property called data key. That property is going to be accessible. When I click on the list item in my other function, I can go back. I can say, okay, EV target, who was it? Which was the list item that was clicked? From this, I can say, give me the attribute data key, which will be this one, which will have the person's ID. So the text is showing the name, and then inside the HTML, inside the list item, there's an attribute called data key holding that. So person ID and name, those two properties, person ID and name, these two first piece, pieces are inside the master list. And this is very important with the master detail. When you move to the detail section, you have to know the key. What is the unique key for this person? I could have shown any one of these other pieces as the first item. Maybe I want to show just the last access dates, and I've got a list of dates. And when I click on it, I see all the other details. Or maybe I want to see a list of avatars, and then I click on the avatar and I go to the detail page. The important thing is that this unique key, this person ID, and we look at them, they're all unique. One, two, three, four. That person ID has to be accessible to me when I get to the detail page. So we create it as an attribute, we stick it in there. When this function is called, when the person clicks on the list item, we extract that number. Now, when you get an attribute, it's always going to be a string. So don't expect that you're going to get a number back. It is going to be a string even though it's a numeric value. If you want it to be considered as a string or JavaScript to treat it as a string, you'll have to do parse int or parse float, cast it to a number, do something to convert it from a string into a number. All right, old active. What I'm doing here is, <clears throat> pardon me, when the person clicked on a list item, we were setting this blue background. I'm doing that by adding the class active to one of the list items. Now, if I've clicked on Megan and I go to click on Camille, I have to remove it from Megan and set it on Camille. So, find the one that's got the class active. If there is one called old that has the class active, which is the old active one, then remove that. Once you've removed the old one, then we can add to EV target, that was the one clicked. That's the one that's getting the active class now. So that's this little bit of code here. What I'm doing is selecting the active element and putting the active CSS class. Okay, so we have our person ID, which is again a string, remember. It's a numeric string, but it's a string nonetheless. We want to find the match. So we need to loop through data people. data dot people for each we'll loop through them now for each person if the person dot person ID if that matches the person ID that we got right here we have a match we have the person that we wanted to show the details for so I'm going to create a variable here, active person. I'm going to take a copy of this person and put it inside of here. I have to declare this outside of my loop so that I still have access to it afterwards. So inside here we will say that active person is person. There we go. We've taken that and we've put it over into this variable. So after the loop is done, now I can use active person. This is one of these four objects. So we can say if we clicked on Brie, that is our active person. This is the element that we're going to be working with. And down here, we're going to loop through all the properties inside of active person. So for prop in active person, there we are. For each one of those, I want to insert into detail list. This one right here, this UL. I'm going to put a list item in here for each one of the props. 
jump back in here. Now, I should clear out the list just in case, because the second time I'm doing this, I'm already going to have some list items there. We want to make sure that we get rid of those. So our UL document uh, query selector whenever I'm working with um, list items. I like to use document fragments. I'll put everything in the document fragment and then add the document fragment all at once to the UL. That way it's only one change to the DOM that's visible in the browser, so it's much better for performance. Our UL. Clear out the old list. And then inside here, create a list item. There we are. So I have a list item. I'm going to extract the prop, each one of these props. And active person sub prop. And why don't we console log that out just so we can see that it is being created. At this point, so, or at this point, we're creating the list items and we're putting the text inside. We're not adding them to the page yet, but I'm just going to make sure this is refreshed. Click on one. Uh, okay, can't set property in HTML of no on line sixty. Oh yes, we're missing our class selector. There we go. There we are. And two, Kara timestamp false avatar. There's Bree, there's Megan. So this is working. We're getting those properties out. We just want to create a list item for each one, and we will append that to the document fragment after our loop. You will append child df. That's going to put it on the page. Sure enough, there we are. Now. Custom styles, we created at least a couple of styles. Uh, let's do the one with the, well, we'll put the class names on all of them. I dot class list dot add. And we're going to take the name of just the property. The properties are uh, person ID, name, last access is mobile avatar. Those are defined in the CSS. There we are. There's the blue text coming up for the, the last access one. Now we have a, a timestamp here. That's kind of ugly. Let's change that into an actual date instead. So I'm going to say if prop equals last access, I'm dealing with the time, else I'm dealing with the other fields. That and then we want to um, inside of here we're going to extract the active person prop. That's a timestamp, and we're going to create a date object. Pass in our timestamp. That's going to be called Timmy. Now we have to decide what we want to write with Timmy. So my string. I'm going to extract the bits and pieces of that to write out, let's say, the month and the year. I'll just paste that in there. I had that saved from before. And now my li text content is going to be equal to that string. So we're getting the date. This is the day of the month. This is the month. But I'm going to that month's constant up above here. here. So I want to extract one of those strings. So months, and then I get the month, which will give me the number from 0 to 11. And then if I wanted to add in the year as well, we could say Timmy, which is our date object, dot get full year. There we are. So I 
got the day, the month, the year, and then I put in all of that in the string as the text content. And there we are. So the dates that are coming out of the data, not today's date, but the dates that are coming out of the data, that's what's being written out here. And that's it. That's master detail. So I'll have all this as code gists for you inside the comments down below. As always, thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments.